I think most companies would be thrilled to have one business that's a large opportunity and we think about what we're doing uh, on the creativity side everybody has a story to tell and creative cloud is the platform that enables anybody to tell that story documents are certainly moving from analog to digital in the document cloud and pdf is the lingua franca for the internet and then when you think about businesses that want to transform Everybody is thinking about digital and digital engagement as the basis for doing that. And we're the leader in three large categories in innovating. So, you know, if the large addressable opportunity and the innovation at Adobe gives us a lot of confidence. A lot of companies are talking about artificial intelligence right now. You've got Adobe Sensei built in uh, to, to your creative products. I explain to us how that translates into financial performance. Is it lower churn uh, through allowing people to, to do things faster? Is it something else? What is it that AI gives you that ends up translating to the top and bottom lines? Well, maybe two examples uh, for that, John. On the creativity side, uh, everybody fears the blank page. And so if AI can start to infer what people want to do in terms of using either Photoshop or one of our creative products. And when you can speak to the computer and it understands and infers what you want to do and makes our products and tools more accessible, that's a huge win because then you can attract a tremendous amount of customers. And at the other end of the spectrum, when you have millions of customers hitting your website, the AI that we have on the digital experience cloud being able to infer intelligence from the trillions of transactions and ensure that you get the right offer that was meant for you in real time, that's something that humans cannot do. So, you know, uh, two really good examples, I think, at different ends of the spectrum of how AI enables our customers to do more with our technology. Your experience cloud is pushing you further into this area of CRM, uh, customer relationship management. That Salesforce is bread and butter. Suddenly, we're talking about Adobe and Salesforce going head to head more and more. You've also partnered with Microsoft uh, in the enterprise uh, along this area. How does that partnership help you push your solution to market versus what people might get from Salesforce? Well, we really believe that what's happening is that every enterprise wants to, in real time, engage with customers. And I think when you think about what CRM used to be, CRM was more about a record that was in a relational database. That is not as important as what you do with that customer information and how you make action out of it. And I think that's where the Adobe and Microsoft partnership is so valuable because together with what they have done with Azure and the ability for people to process the data at the pace at which they want and what Adobe has done because we enable people to attract customers to your platform, we allow you to engage it. So we think we're actually creating a brand new category and in industry uh, which is all about digital engagement and customer experience management far more critical than what a record might store. Is there a philosophical difference between the way that you're approaching this and you see competitors, including Salesforce, approaching it? Are you drawing a contrast? Well, we continue to think that content and data and how content and data come together is really what this magic happens. You walked into a retail store, you're accessing an application on a mobile device, and it's all about what's the right content that's being delivered based on the intelligence. So I think it's a dramatically different approach that Adobe has pioneered. And I think it's companies like Adobe and Microsoft and SAP who actually see this vision for what's uh, happening in the world. A couple quarters ago, I asked you about acquisition pace because I was looking at your record and it looked like it was time for a sizable acquisition. Uh, you announced the Magento acquisition not long after that. Now people are wondering about what you guys are going to do, if anything, with uh, Marketo. I, I know you're not, probably not going to answer specifically on that name, but are you still on the hunt for sizable acquisitions potentially in the billions? You have the market cap for it. Well, we continue to think that when we look at what would make sense for Adobe, we're really focused on do companies have great technology, 
Are they the right people? And how does it completely transform what we can do as a business? And so we're very pleased with the portfolio that we have when you think about what we are doing across our three clouds. We're the leaders in this particular category. And so, you know, I think trying to focus on the existing acquisition you talked about, Magento, making it successful, it's off to a great start. That's really how Adobe thinks about, you know, what we do organically versus how we think about inorganic. So you're not going to buy Marketo? Uh, you know, we will not come okay. on any. Uh, <laughs> well, I thought I'd try. Uh, I was also looking uh, at the calendar. A little more than 10 years ago, you took over as CEO of Adobe. Not long after that, Lehman failed. Financial crisis time. All sorts of stocks go down. What do you remember about being a new CEO during that period, and how did it shape the way you set your agenda after that for Adobe? The, the growth, I mean, people can look at the stock chart and see it. Well, I've been at the company 20 years, John, actually. And yeah, we go point, back 18. Yes, I remember. <laughs> I mean, the first time we've done launches of even Creative Suite, which was the precursor to the Creative Cloud, you were there with us on this journey. But, you know, the funny thing is when I took over in 2007, in 2008, we had record revenues. And I'm like, how hard can this be? Even I can do it. <laughs> and then the recession hit. But I think it taught us two things. The first was, as you know, at that point, we didn't have much recurring revenue. We announced we are close to 90% recurring revenue. And we weren't innovating at the pace at which we needed to. And so we actually looked at that crisis that happened, the financial crisis, as a big missed opportunity if we didn't transform the company. And as you know, we both acquired Omniture at that point to put us on this journey with digital experience. Mm -hmm. And we said we're going to fundamentally transform creativity. So. I think while uh, you know, the lessons that we learned along that way were about building a company for the long run, I think you know, uh, I, I have just fond memories of even that time because adversity, I think, teaches you how to really focus on what's important for your customers and your employees.